Good morning, children. Good morning. Happy, Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy Sabbath, church. Okay, we shall sing one song. Maybe I'll, I'll ask the children to stand. I've heard your word and I've eaten it. I've eaten it. I've eaten it. I've heard your word and I've eaten it. I've put it down in my heart. When I hear the word of God, it always sounds so sweet. I want to make a Bible sandwich and eat it if I could. I've heard your word and I've eaten it. I've eaten it. I've eaten it. I've heard your word and I've eaten it. I've put it down in my heart. I'll ask one of us to pray. Mama Paco, please pray for us as we start. Dear God, we thank you so much for this Sabbath. We ask that you may open up our hearts to hear from you. Please be with our teacher as she teaches us. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to welcome all of you to our sermon today. My name is Kilen Todera, and this month of February, we, the Cradle A, will be taking you through the fundamental belief number 18, the gift of prophecy. We started last week, and we opened our first gift, and we really learned quite a lot. One of the things that we learned was the gift of prophecy is a gift from the Holy Spirit, and also their prophets are given a special message to share the word of God to others. We also learned that um, the gift of prophecy is still relevant in our church today. We also, uh, we were told about some prophets. Can we mention just a few that we learned? Moses. 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 Another person? Hmm? Isaiah. Isaiah. So, and many others, there are also lady prophets like Deborah that we got to know about. So this week, we are today, we are going to open our second gift, and we are going to learn who, who can get the gift of prophecy, and how can we be able to know a true and a false prophet. So when you, we'll start with who can receive the gift of prophecy. The Bible tells us in the book of Joel 2.28, in the last days, God will pour his spirit to all flesh. Young men and, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Young, uh, young old men will dream dreams and young men will see vision. So the gift of prophecy is given to anyone in church. Two, we also look at not everybody in church can receive the gift of prophecy. When you read 1 Corinthians 12, it tells us about this, uh, the gifts of the Spirit. There are so many, and it likens the church like the body. When you look at our bodies, we have our head, we have our ears, we have our hands, and each of those parts of our body has a different function. Same to the church, uh, to, to the gift uh, of the spirit. We are given different gifts so that we as a church, we can profit. So the gift of prophecy is given, the Holy Spirit chooses who to give. We also uh, learn that the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying mark of the remnant church. Who are the remnant church? These are the people who keep all the commandments of God and who have the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus is yes. the message, is where the message that we preach always points us to God. So that is the gift of the spirit to the church. 
as we saw there last week, the gift of prophecy is still active and alive in church. But do you know there is a warning for all of us that in as much as any of us can receive the gift of prophecy, not all of us are true prophets. Jesus, our friend, little children, warns us that we should be aware of these false pro prophets. Who are these false prophets? They, they are people who lie to us so that they can remove us away from God and slip away from our faith. If you look at our, um, in Matthew 7, 15, going forward up to 18, it tells us that these false prophets, they are like wolves, uh, she, they, they are wolves dressed in sheep, so you will not be able to know them very well. Have we ever encountered a counterfeit currency? Money, okay? When you go to buy something, there is real money and there is counterfeit. They, are, they look similar in everything, the shape, the way they look, but there is usually a special feature in the real money that makes it not to be a counterfeit. That is the same way with us being able to identify a true prophet. So what does the Bible tell us about how well we can be able to identify a true prophet from a false prophet so that as young children, we do not fall away from his word. So the first test is the message of the prophet in harmony with the word of God. And we read in Isaiah 8.20, if someone comes and does not speak according to the word of God, then that is not of God. So when a, someone stands and says they are a prophet, we have to look, are they speaking according to the word of God? Are they glorifying God instead of self? I know as a church we've had so many prophets out there. Some will say, do as I say, and not what the Bible say. But children, remember, the message has to be in line with the word of God. Number two, does the prophet recognize Christ came in flesh? And here we'll read First John 4, 2, verse 3. And it says, it, by this you shall know that the Spirit is from God. Uh, if a spirit confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord and came in flesh. We are well, coming in flesh meaning that we recognize that Christ was there in the beginning, that Christ was born, the virgin birth, that Christ died for our sin, the atoning sacrifice, he resurrected, and he's, and, uh, and he's, right now, he's, uh, he's in, he's, he went, he, he's doing, uh, <laughs> okay, we recognize that Christ died, he ascended, and he's uh, offering our, he's doing the, at intercessory work. Thank you, class, for reminding me. So that, those are the things that we, we look at when we recognize that Christ came in flesh. The third test, um, have, have their word come to pass? And I know this can really confuse us, even children and even the church. Most of the time, there are people who prophesy and their words yeah. come to pass. But do, are they prophets? We need to be very careful about that. Not every person that the word come to pass is a prophet. So we also have to gauge the prophets with the other test that we have put. In Jeremiah 28 verse 9, which says, We shall know that this is a prophet from God if the prophecy is fulfilled. And the last uh, test of a prophet how are they living their lives? Are their lives godly? Do they reflect the fruit 
of the Spirit. This is what will tell us whether there is evidence in their work. In Matthew 7, 16, we are told that we shall be able to know them by their fruit. A bad fruit cannot bear a good fruit. Neither a good uh, tree bear a bad fruit. So those are the key te te tests of the true prophet. But there are many others, but these are important for us children so that we can be able to see whether the, uh, the person who is saying is a prophet is a prophet. In our church, we, uh, one of our founder was a prophet. And why do we believe that he was a prophet? So we hold against the tests that we have said. The first is the agreement with the Bible. When you look at Mrs. White writing, his, her literature always her puts the scriptures at the fore. She always refers and makes reference to the Bible. So her literature are usually are in accordance with the Bible. We also, she has acknowledged that Christ came in fr flesh. Majority of us have been able to read the desires of ages and step up to Christ and also urge children to be able to take this book and read. And he has been able to point us to Jesus through those books. And also when you look at uh, accuracy in prediction, we, I'll just mention one, her ministry of health. It, uh, most of our writing in health, we can attest to it that it has really come true. And lastly, godly living and her influence in her ministry. Well, when she, uh, she died, one, of, um, uh, one person, not of the church, made a testimony and he said, surely Mrs. White lived a godly life. And when you look at her literature, it has a lot of influence pointing us to good and morality living, pointing us to Christ so that we can be able to live a right life. And also he has been able to urge us to do missionary work, to be able to do publishing through missions so that we can be able to spread the word of God to others. So as we conclude... Children and church, I want to leave you with these verses. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 20 to 21. It tells us, do not despise prophecy. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. What does it mean not to despise? As you have said, in these last days, there are prophets who will rise amongst us. So when somebody says he's a prophet, we need to consider, but we need not only to consider, but test and see whether there are true prophets of God. And when, if they are, then we need to listen to them. Because 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20 tells us, Believe in God your Lord, you shall be established. Believe in his prophet and you shall prosper. So that's the end of our, uh, our lesson this uh, morning. Next week, we shall be able to learn more about the purpose of the gift of prophecy and how best we can use the gift. I will ask... Um, one of us to pray for us, then we can conclude. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we thank you so much for granting us our time to share your word this morning. We thank you for the children, someone. We pray that you may give us the gifts of prophecy, that we may proclaim your word. This is our prayer in Jesus' name.